So th this review is uh, of a black exploitation film. It's a, a film from 1974 uh, called uh, The Black Connection. It has an alternative title of uh, Run Nigger Run, and it has a, an amazing soundtrack. The band uh, that made the soundtrack is a, is a group called Checkmates Limited. Uh, they actually star in the film. Their singer at the time is the the principal. Uh, character and they released a soundtrack album under a title F slash S slash Z slash um. um and it's, it's got some amazing uh, tracks on there. The film I came across purely by accident this year uh, to explain for family in particular I'm having a, a a Christ exploitation Christmas, so I've been buying people uh, Christ exploitation DVDs, uh, some old, some some more recent, uh, and one of the ones that was in a kind of universal format, I could only access, or, or at least the only place I saw it available, was uh, an online store somewhere in the states, and because postage. Now it's so much from the states. It was some, you know, something like fourteen dollars or more just for just for one CD, and actually no more for two or three. I figured I'd, I'd buy myself one, so I had a flick through stuff that they had and, and things that looked looked interesting, looked fun, might be might be hilariously bad, might be fun to riff. Uh, I came across this, which looked looked kind of interesting, so I. I I looked it up online, I heard some of the music, I bought it, it arrived It arrived in about 10 days, it came very quickly, um, quicker than some stuff that I'd ordered uh, uh, from Amazon in the UK. And, and so I watched this film and I was pleasantly surprised. I, I went into it with fairly low expectations, I thought 70s exploitation film, this is going to be it's going to be shot like a snuff movie, it's going to look uh, kind of ropey, the story's going to be all over the place, the cinematography will be shit and, and you know, they'll be fun to be had and taking the piss out of it. Actually, what I got was a very, very competent, if slightly overcomplicated movie. Um, it starts out in in a very complicated way. You, you have a, a kind of a long protracted title sequence of, of cars driving through uh, Las Vegas and then you have a lot of different scenes in different locations with people whose relationships to the others aren't immediately apparent and in some cases don't ever become terribly clear. So that, that 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 start throws you in at the middle, and it, it's it's kind of indicative of one of the things that's interesting about the film, which is that it's it is surprisingly competent. There are, there are bits where it feels like these are very much amateur filmmakers, which I'll, I'll I'll get to. But the plot and the way the plot is structured, the way the pieces edited together again with some exceptions which I'm, I'm going to come to uh, on the whole it feels like a real film it mostly it mostly looks like a real film albeit not super clear it doesn't have very dynamic or interesting angles or camera movements it, it's uh, it, it, it looks like a kind of fairly Shaky TV pilot in some ways, albeit a, a black exploitation one. But it it really only has three points where it it kind of trips and falls on its face. Um, the kind of broad outline of this is our principal character, whose name I forget. Uh, basically a, a kind of black gangster, he owes the mob uh, some money, he also owes them 
some heroin. And he's basically trying to find a scam where he can get both the money and the, the heroin to them. And he goes through this. There, there are then a couple of uh, a couple of B plots. There is a guy who's kind of gotten himself in some financial trouble and his sister has a plan to get him out of that. His sister's a school teacher. And there's another B plot which plays into the main plot where someone sends out a hitman after a principal black gangster and I cannot remember the reason for that because there was so much other stuff going on. And it, it, it is a complicated movie, it is a movie that sort of demands you watch it a couple of times and it, it reminded me specifically of a couple of other films of that period, albeit it's nowhere, nowhere near as, as as good. It's 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 competent. It looks like a real film. You know, it doesn't look like uh, something pretty shady. But it 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 has quite poor acting, and and it has these these problems that I'm going to get to later on. But the, but it, it sort of reminds me of on on the one hand, uh, Friends of Eddie Coyle. Friends of Eddie Coyle is a film from around the same time, I think it might be the year after, it might be 1975, in which Robert Mitchum plays a gangster who's kind of roll, rolled over and, and, and given up uh, some of his former associates, and from that point on he's a, a marked man, and the film is a very dour portrait of this man who knows he's going to die, he knows he's going to be killed. And it's it's going through his his last days until the the inevitable happens. So it has, in a lot of ways, it has a kind of air of that. It also, in some specifics, has echoes of Chinatown, which came out the same year. Uh, and, and Chinatown again, it has a very convoluted plot. It has a lot of things going on, and it has a main character who isn't party to most of what's happening, although, I mean, in this case, he's a gangster, he's not nearly, you know, as badass as as the white gangsters in this. He's really out of his depth. And also, all the gangsters in this are very much subject to kind of wider social and cultural forces. None of them has the whole picture, and none of them knows what's going on. None of them really has much power or much alternative in what they do. They're very much scraping a living. They're, they're very bottom of the barrel gangsters. And you feel that the political forces, the police, and generally the, the privilege of, of rich white people is really something that's a much more powerful force than, than these gangsters and a much more powerful force acting on them than they can anticipate or than they can actually combat. They're very much trapped. So it, it again, like Chinatown, it has this sense of things beyond the frame, beyond what the characters know, which, which they're, they're subject to and they don't understand and they can't fight. So, I'm now probably slightly overselling it, but it, it, it's got this, it's got all, all this going on. It has kind of three moments where it, as I say, falls, falls on its face. Um, one of them is hilarious. One of them is kind of funny, especially if you're watching it with other people and you can riff it, and it's, it's also a bit kind of, what the fuck? Uh, and the other... I've forgotten what the other one is. No, the other one is kind of an accidental resemblance to 
being more progressive than the film actually is. So I'll, I'll start with that because that's not a particular incident or a particular scene. There are not a lot of female characters in this film and where they are they're girlfriends, hookers, um, you know, but they don't really have much of, a, of an identity. There are, however, a couple of char female characters who are quite strong. Uh, for one, you have the uh, sister, the school teacher sister, of, of the guy who's trying to get himself out of trouble. And she's initially played as uh, kind of a ball breaker, although it turns out that she's really very much out of her depth when she tries to get into this and tries to help her brother and she gets written out of the film quite early on um, and she she has a very weirdly incestuous seeming and kind of intrusive relationship with her brother the whole thing is a bit odd and if she didn't say that she was his sister you would wonder is, is, is she his lover? Is she a prostitute? Is she like a dominatrix or something? You, you don't quite know what's going on there, except that they specify it, and it, it really, it really remains very odd. So the, I suppose that's another kind of oddity. But she's she's one of the strong characters. The other strong character is a, a lesbian uh, chauffeur for for the black gangsters. Is she, does she work for the black gangsters? Yeah, yeah, I think she does. And and she's she's not particularly played for, for titillation. Like she does have some kind of stupid leather costume, but she it, it's not particularly arousing or titillating. She's just there as a as a character. And with both of these characters and occasionally with stuff that some of the other women will say, where these where these characters have to drive the plot or they have to do something important for that scene or that section of the film, they're not written as women. They're not written like the, the other women who are who are just who are just hookers of decoration. They're actually written exactly in the same way that the men are. Which I'm I'm sure is an accident, I'm sure it's a slight deficiency of of the screenwriting that they had kind of one mode of writing everyone and mostly the women weren't considered except when they're, they're sort of praising their man or asking for sex or at, at one point uh, trying to get hold of some heroin but when they have to do something for the plot they're written exactly the same way as all the men are written and that that kind of accidentally comes across as very progressive. Um, so that that that's that that's one of those accidentally that, that's, that's one of those things that, that really stands out. That's possibly a mark of, of the inexperience or, or or not quite competence. The the next one is there's a fight sequence which is not. Not very well choreographed, not very well shot. It's it's really a couple of minutes, two, three minutes, maybe more, of fat, middle-aged white man foo. Uh, the assassin and one of the mobsters meet up in a hotel in uh, around around a swimming pool and they fight. And it is one of the slowest, most arthritic uh, unhealthy fight sequences you have ever seen. You you worry that one of these guys is going to have an asthma attack and 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 die or have a heart attack and topple into the pool. Uh, and one of them does obviously get drowned in the pool because otherwise why would you have a fight sequence there? Um, whether that was the plan all along. And, and they specifically engineered it to be that, or whether that was just the space that they could get to use and, and the drowning was an afterthought, I don't know. But it, uh, it's, 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 it's kind of fun, it sort of works. Um, 
but it's it's slow and poorly choreographed and and over long and you worry about the health of both of these guys and you you're you're not afraid of them. It takes away a lot of the intimidation factor of both of them. Um And my my favourite of these moments that doesn't work in the, in the film, and, and my favourite moment to ref is, is is the cable car scene, which is really a couple of things. The the black gangster arranges to meet another mobster who he's trying to organise a, a, a scam with on top of a mountain, and so he. You see him leave his house or hotel, I think he leaves a hotel, and drives to this cable car, he gets onto the cable car, you see the cable car leave and start going up the mountain, you, you see the interior shot fairly poorly, you see him standing around looking out of the window, you see the assassin who has followed him, you see, saw him get into his car, follow it, drive there, get into the cable car, you see him, sometimes you see the, the, I think once you see the interior of the cable car and there's other people there, which is surprising because it looks empty in these other shots. Um, and you see the cables, you see the sky, you see the ground, you see the mountain, and you kind of keep cutting from uh, black gangster, assassin, cables, ground, sky, mountain, back again, back around this sequence, and it goes on for quite a long time. Then it gets to the top, it kind of hits the top, it gets locked on, the doors open, everyone gets out, and there's a lot of, there's more people in there than, than you would have thought. The black gangster goes inside to meet this other mobster, and in, in a nice touch, the, the assassin sort of gets that goes outside to, to listen in to what's going on. He didn't know where the black gangster was heading when he got in his car, so he doesn't have a, a coat or hat, and it's cold up there, and he's obviously cold. He's, he's rubbing his hands. He, he looks chilly. Um, so the, the, two, the two guys meet, they, they talk, they organise a, a further meeting which will come up with a solution for this uh, black gangster's problems. They then get back in the cable car. The assassin also gets in the cable car and the ride down seems to take even longer than the ride up and some of these shots are much more arty. You'll see the, the, the cable car sort of looking up at the cables reach a pylon, pass over the pylon, pass down. You see more arty shots of the ground, more arty shots of the sky, back to the black gangster, back to the assassin, round this whole process again. Interminable, absolutely unnecessary length, unnecessary detail. And you're, you're kind of worrying that you're going to have to see this whole run back to the cars again, the whole drive back to the hotel. But Cable car reaches the bottom, cable car locks on, and smash cut, boom. We don't see people coming out of it, we just smash cut to an airplane taking off. It, it's bizarre editing, it's, it's utterly insane. You've, you've had this really protracted sequence with unnecessarily long shots, unnecessarily hearty shots, more detail than you need. All you needed was kind of establishing shots maybe something on the ride up and down just to build up a kind of tension but nothing like what you have but you, but you have it drawn out drawn out something's happening some drawn out something's happening something's going to happen smash cut airplane taking off wow um and and that's that's kind of it there's, there's an interesting scam for how the drugs are going to be uh, smuggled in to Las Vegas for, for the black gangster to pick up. Uh, you've got this hope that he might uh, escape this situation. 
obviously he, he doesn't. You've got so many kind of different elements in play, some of a lot of which don't know about each other or don't know what's going on. And and the film kind of ends, and it's very open-ended about the fates of of other characters and how this mess is going to be cleaned up because a lot of people are going to be in the shit. You're, you're <laughs> kind of at, at the uh, you you you're at the inception of a lot of the other quite interesting stories. Um, overall, I would I would recommend it. I mean, as I say, it's not shot the best. It's it doesn't it doesn't look like a porno or a snuff movie. So it's it, it's better shot than that. It uh, the sound is is okay. It's not terrible. The script is surprisingly on point and competent. It, it has this sort of problem that that women are either completely underwritten or they're just written as men. But that kind of gives them an accidental strength. The editing mostly is competent, apart from the bizarre um well the fight choreography and, and, and the uh, and the cable car scene the acting on the whole is shaky it's not good it, it's very much people acting saying lines um but you you kind of attune to that you you get uh, you get into that, and only a few people end up standing out. I would, I would really recommend this. It, it's something that you can watch both for fun. You can, you can kind of look at it and, and go, yeah, I, I enjoyed that. It, it's, it's not the Friends of Eddie Coyle. It's, it's not, uh, it's not Chinatown. It's not Goodfellas. It's not sort of one of the better known or better black exploitation flicks. But it's. It's watchable, it's serviceable, you'll have fun with it. And it's also something that you can riff because it has it has those moments that, that I've highlighted. It's got it's got some other moments. Um and it it also does things with the script. There's there's and the the way that the drugs are going to be smuggled into into Las Vegas actually leads to quite a nice image um, for the position of, of gangsters and, and for the position of, of black people generally within society that actually looks intentional. I mean, yeah, I guess that's the best word for it. A lot of what this film does appears to be intentional. It's not, it's not an accident. There was, there was no... Um, you know, this wasn't something that, that uh, these characters just, that the, the filmmakers just stumbled into. They had enough competence that they knew how to make a film that was shaped like a film, that looked like a film, that worked like a film. And for the most part, it, it does. So, yeah, go, go check it out.